if you're wondering how you choose or select the skills or the patterns within the spelling to focus on with your children for orthographic mapping, then stay tuned, we'll have a quick chat about that. My name is Angela Ema, I'm a literacy consultant and teacher trainer. So how do you identify or select a word at home that you're going to support your child to map to the print? Uh, there are a couple of great places you can go. One is if your child brings home, it's often a weekly spelling list, you can use that list to help you to identify the target or focus patterns that your child is working on that week in their spelling program. So a couple of little things that you can do uh, to dig a little bit deeper into that list so that you're not perhaps doing every single word on the list is to firstly review the list when it comes home with your child and ask them to read you the words in the list and then you take the list and ask if there are any words in the list they think they already know. Now it can be handy at home to have a little whiteboard. Uh, if not, just a, you know, a, a, some paper or a working book at home, a notebook or something is fine. But whiteboards at home can be really helpful, just a small one, because when children write on a whiteboard, it's quite temporary. So they feel a bit more relaxed than if they're writing something that requires rubbing out or is a more permanent sort of source of information. So whiteboards are great in that way. So ask a child, are there any words in the list they think they already know? Now they might need you just to read some of the words in the list again. And if they think, yeah, I already know that word, they can write it on the whiteboard for you and you'll already identify, well, that's one my child knows. Perhaps I will check whether they can generalize the principles or skills in that word to other similar words. So if they had the word night, it was a dark stormy night, N-I-G-H-T. You might ask them if they also could rub that one out now, rub out night. Do you know how to write fright? Now what you're asking your child to do is to connect the skills for spelling that word to another word that requires the same spelling pattern. So effectively you're asking them to generalize the principle in the spelling of that word, so the target principle, which might be the I-G-H is making the I sound in the language as a speech sound. So you're asking them to generalise it. It's not enough that the children can write the words in the spelling list. They've got to be able to generalise the principles that underpin the skills in that word or the knowledge in that word to words that perhaps aren't in the list. Now, if your child is able to write a variety of other words that have that I-G-H uh, equals the I sound, then that's one that you could probably tick off. I think they've got that one. So then you're looking for, so you're just initially doing a quick check. Is there anything else I could do there to support my child to have better understandings around that? But if they know them and they can apply the principle, you don't really have to prioritise that one. If they know it but they can't apply the principle to other words, then that might be a good one for you to identify. I'm going to map that so that I can help my, my child apply that spelling principle to other words and therefore they've got this lovely generalisation of the information. But you can keep working through that list and identify some that are semi-known. Your child is not that far from the skills in that word and so you might identify those as good starting points. And if there's anything in the list that's really very tricky, you might save that one to later in the week and you might also do the trickier ones if they re require a little bit more of your attention and a little bit more support and work you might decide, I'm just going to do that one on its own. I won't do perhaps two different orthographic map mapping patterns on that night. I'm just going to do the one. Now, just another little tip if you're using that spelling list is that if you do a pattern or a couple of patterns on the Monday night, then on the Tuesday, you always want to start with review. Just 
um, ask your child to write those words and similar words if they if you've got an, one or two other examples on the little whiteboard before you start any new mapping on the second night. The, the most effective thing is to not learn them in one hit and then don't revisit them. It's this revisiting over time. And this process of revisiting over time, it's actually better if you do it over a period of weeks rather than just a period of a few days. So you might be also looking at some of the patterns from last week and the week before. You don't have to test all the words all the time, but just, just to uh, ask your lovely child to write some of those words uh, periodically over that few week period, we know that that's far more effective at actually um, you know, embedding that knowledge over time. So that's one place you can go to look for patterns. The other place is uh, some of the nightly reading material that your child brings home. So if you've got a, a reader bringing home a book like this, Life in the Trees, you might look on the front cover and you might identify it the, the word the, life in the trees. So that might be a word that you think, look, that word is in the book quite a number of times. It's a word I'm fairly sure my child has not learned yet to write, but certainly they're seeing it a lot. So if they're seeing it a lot in the reading books, if it's a word that is commonly used in the talking, then that word is a high frequency word or common word. And that's a good one for you to target at home as well. Uh, if you're reading, it doesn't matter what level you're reading with, but you'll find great patterns across the board in all of these sorts of resources. So you might identify from a text like this, the word rough, R-O-U-G-H, might be a pattern that you think, you know, that will be a good one to map there's more words that work like that. I can think of a little group of words, rough, tough, enough. Uh, they're words that are uh, suitable for my child because I'm seeing them in this kind of text that they're reading. The child is not in the foundation year where you know the spelling pattern is quite advanced for where the child currently sits. So you might just take a, a word out of the text. Now, how you choose the word from the text might be that you identify your child has had to work on that one to figure it out. They've taken several seconds, even though they might not have uttered anything, several seconds, they're trying to process that word, they're trying to match what they see to the patterns of speech that they hear to be able to uh, figure out how those phonemes and graphemes go together. Remember, a phoneme is an individual speech sound and a grapheme is the letter or letters that we use to record that speech sound. So if a child is looking at a word for a few seconds, they're figuring that out. If they are not figuring it out, the word is more quickly said and quite, you know, it might be two words said per second if your child is over 10 and, um, you know, a word a second if they are under 10. So if they're taking several seconds to get the word, then they're working on that word. So that word can be a handy one to select. Now, if there are lots of words your child is working on, you wanna pick one that is less complex than the most complex ones in the text. So uh, working out words when you're reading is a lot easier than working out words when you spell them, okay? Spelling or writing involves many more complex cognitive processes than the reading of those words does because the word already exists in the reading. They can see those letters within the word, whereas in the spelling of the word, they can't see any of the letters. They've got to think of the speech sound and correspond them to the graphemes. So the reading books are a great place to go. The spelling list is also a great place to go. So anywhere really that there are words and spelling patterns that your child is encountering, and you think, you know what, that one I think is manageable for my child. You don't want to make it so complex that they can't get to it. It's, it's not a useful word if it's a word they will seldom use. There might be big ticket words that they use all the time that you could be supporting with. And the other great place you can get uh, some words is if your child writes at home, then you can pull a word out of what they're writing. 
So it might be that they write at home to complete part of their homework. And if they are, if you just take a look at what they're writing there, and if there's a word in there that you think, I think it would be handy for us to do that one, then you're actually selecting something as in all of these approaches, getting it out of the spelling, out of the book, out of the homework, they need that word anyway. So you're not extending the homework for longer to do more things that are not actually relevant to what the child is doing. You want to find things that help from where they currently are and using what they currently do. So I hope that helps.